for me to be here before you people in front of this camera, it's taken a lot of courage. I'm already feeling so anxious on the inside, sitting here and having to speak in front of this camera and share my story in front of you guys. But despite the fact that I'm so anxious on the inside, I'm going to do it until the end. Okay, my name is Jacinta Amboy Njoroge. I'm 24 years old. Uh, I've been living with social anxiety disorder and anthrophobia, which means that I'm scared of men since childhood. Social anxiety is more than just being shy. There is more to having social anxiety than being shy and quiet. Uh, I can describe social anxiety as an invisible disorder. It's a silently painful experience. On the outside, you may appear normal, but on the inside, you are a mess. There's a difference between being shy and having social anxiety. Being shy is when you feel a little bit nervous being around people or interacting with people, but you are able to overcome it. But for social anxiety, it's the extreme fear, intense fear of being judged, being scrutinized, being embarrassed, being evaluated negatively by people. And it gets to a point where you avoid social situations at all costs. And when you're in those social situations, you experience a lot of physical symptoms. Your heart starts to beat rapidly. You start to sweat, trembling, shaking, nausea, blushing. You avoid eye contact. You have these physical symptoms, anxiety attacks, panic attacks. And sometimes it's so overwhelming, you end up avoiding situations where you might have to experience those symptoms. It cuts from that small thing, from making phone calls, talking on the phone, dating, meeting new people, interacting with unfamiliar people, going to a shop to order something, eating in front of people, eating in public, taking a public transport, walking in the streets, you always feel like as if everyone is staring at you. You are always experiencing extreme excessive fear while doing every single activity. Let me tell you, I can't go to a restaurant and eat in front of people unless it's a restaurant where, where I know, like these chips restaurants in town where you know you'll sit while well facing the mirror. But these other restaurants that you know will be seated and people are all there, I can't because of how much anxious I feel. Sometimes I even stay hungry because I know I won't be able to eat in front of people or go and order something from somewhere. For anthrophobia, which means that I'm scared of men since childhood, this fear that I have towards men has really impacted my life negatively. Up to now, at 24 years, I've never had a boyfriend, I've never dated, not that guys have never approached me or asked me out, but I always put them off at the first instance. I always avoid them at all costs. To them, it comes out as just being shy. I can give a list of about even more than maybe even 20 or 15 guys who have told me that. Hey, and you are shy, now come walk, but it's always very, very hard for me to tell, how can you tell a guy that? you fear them, you know, it will sound irrational, they won't understand. And that's why I, I avoid men at all costs. Interactions with men drain me. I always feel so fearful interacting with them and I avoid them. It doesn't matter who that guy is. Even my male cousins, I don't even socialize with them. I don't interact with them. I've never had any male friend, any person, any male that I can say is my friend. and. I usually feel so bad when I'm with my age mates and they start talking about relationship stuff. I always get out of there like fire, I always just run away because I know that when they are sharing their experiences, I won't have anything to say. I'll just be there the whole time, just quiet. And I've always been asked by some of the people at Jacinta, have you even ever had a boyfriend? And I always feel bad 
because I know I've never had a boyfriend and I know I don't know what I can tell them. I don't know even how I can tell them that I've never had a boyfriend or I have never had a male friend because I'm scared of men. You see, they'll just laugh and they'll find it stupid, but it's something that has really affected my life. I even don't know if I'll remain single for the rest of my life. <laughs> I even have this picture of me at only three years and in that picture I'm crying. The reason for me crying is because I was afraid to stand next to this boy who was my age and be taken a picture together with that boy. I remember growing up asking my mom why was I crying this picture and my mom telling me that you are crying this picture because you are afraid of standing next to this boy and be taken a picture together. And whenever I look at that picture, I see a traumatized kid. I see a kid who was not helped, who was suffering in silence and was not helped. I can't imagine how at only three years, I, I feared men so much. And these two mental health conditions, androphobia and social anxiety disorder, they have really impacted my life negatively in a very bad way. And they all stem back from my childhood. Below the age of three years, I was sexually abused and raped. And what I never knew was that my childhood trauma left mental and psychological scars that I'm still struggling with up to date. And what I, who I am today is majorly because of what I went through in my childhood. Growing up, I never knew that such a huge wound was embedded in me for so long. I, I had lost all memories of ever experiencing those childhood trauma of being abused sexually as a child. I never knew it growing up, but I used to ask myself, okay, why am I always so afraid of men? Why am I always, I can't be that I fear men for no reason. No, there's no normal person who can have this huge fear towards men if they've not gone through something with those men. So it used to hurt me so much and I didn't know who I would share with. And the day I discovered that it's true, I went through something like that. It hurt me so much to realize that even I was not taken for therapy or help. Can you imagine my parents already knew at three years that I feared boys, but they just, maybe they thought I'll outgrow it, but up to now I've never outgrown it. I never used to interact with people. I was always a loner. I can even remember back in primary when I joined class one. It was my first day in school. And I remember during break time, all the students got out of class with so much happiness to go outside and play. But I remained in class all alone, not because I was sick, but because of so much anxiety, so much fear in me, I couldn't get out of class and go and have to interact with my classmates and pray with them. So I remained in class. And the moment I saw that I was the only one in class, I got out of class and I went to the field. But can you imagine I never went to play with my cl classmates. I just went and stood somewhere all alone, staring at my classmates as, as they were playing with each other. And I remember one of my classmates coming to me and asking me, Sasa, what's your name? And even me saying my name to that girl, I was feeling so much fearful and afraid to a point even speaking was a problem. But I just forced myself to tell that girl my, my name and the girl convinced me to go and play with them. I had refused, but she, drew, she took my hand and she forced me to go and play with them with them. In class, I never used to talk. I was always quiet. I never said anything. Even raising my hand to answer a question in class was a very big help for me. And one time in class five, I remember we had this teacher and this teacher nicknamed me my eye. This teacher nicknamed me my eye because the teacher thought that I never used to behave my age. At that time, I was only 10 years. But my behaviors looked immature, like that of a very young kid. And this teacher 
started calling me my my is something that is weak something that you know an egg when you take an egg and you it falls it will break now the teacher used to call me my eye all the time this made all the class five students started calling me my the teacher used to tease me a lot and bully me a lot uh, what hurt me the most is that the teacher never even took time to even sit me down and ask me why are you always like this why are you always so fearful moga uh, why are you like this the teacher just judged me and the teacher was a female so it used to hurt me so so much and it went also another time still in class 5 i was made to sit between two boys and that was one of the worst days of my life worst times of my life and during class lessons i always put my hand like this on the on the desk to avoid them having to look at me i i was always feeling extreme fear just being around them and it hurt me so much my classmates used to make fun of me and ask me why am i always so scared of boys for no reason i can you imagine i reconnected with a classmate of mine we studied together in primary school through facebook and we started talking on whatsapp and the first thing that girl asked me when we started talking on whatsapp was jacinta uliacha kuogopa boys that really shocked me it hit me so hard i couldn't believe it that really hurt me so much i couldn't believe it that after 10 years i'm still struggling with the same thing and that this girl has never forgotten it hurt me so much and i have just avoided replying to her and i changed the topic but i spent the rest of the week feeling so sad asking myself god you mean it was this real back in primary you mean people knew it for me i thought maybe people didn't know about it because they had already forgotten my primary life but just discovering that people already knew it in primary really hurt me when i joined high school i was i had now started you know in high school you are now in adolescent and i remember i was so anxious about going to a boarding school i didn't know how my life would turn out in high school and i really suffered in high school but i thank god because our school was somewhat very christian so there was no that much bullying that's when i started noticing that i was different from other students because you know in primary i used to stay at home now in high school you spend most of your time with these students you see how they behave and you ask yourself why am i this different why can't i even express myself for even a minute why am i always so this quiet why do i find it hard to interact with my classmates to make, connect with people my prayer every day was god deliver me from the spirit of fear i don't want to live with this spirit of fear because i felt that it was interfering with my performance in school and i didn't really know what to do every time a pastor would come to a school and say at those with issues kujeni mbele muombewe come in front and be prayed for i was always among the people who went there in front i became so religious because i wanted god to deliver me from the spirit of fear for me i thought i had this spirit of fear and every time i would go in front the fear never went away after the pastors had gone the bishops i still had the same condition i still had the same issue this one time in form 3 is when all myself my little self esteem of speaking in front of the class was destroyed completely and you know during a sect book class all the students are supposed to read in front to read a little bit of a passage and i remember the moment the teacher said that i started feeling intense fear panic anxiety kicked in in me i started having this panic attacks trembling shaking feeling nausea and i remember when it was my turn to read i read the first sentence when i was about to read the second sentence my voice became shaky i it my voice became so shaky to a point i started crying in started crying i couldn't take it anymore so i started crying because of how much anxious i was feeling 
And that moment, I felt as if I was going to stand up and get out of that class and that school and never come back. Because I was feeling this extreme anxiousness in me and I couldn't control it. That's why I was crying. Because from Form 1, Form 2, Form 3, I was tired of always feeling this way. And I couldn't understand why even for just 10 minutes, I could just be confident to speak in front of the class. When it came to my studies back in high school, I always underperformed. I always got, the highest I got maybe was a C minor. I used to get these C minors. That's how my performance was. And I remember every time we had parents coming to our school, I only always knew that my parents would live with a negative image about me because every time they came to school, uh, when we were going to interact with the teachers, the only thing the teachers would say was that Jacinta doesn't participate in class, is always quiet in class, you get, and it used to hurt me every time, and I used to fear academic days because I knew every time my mom or my dad would come, they would always be told of how quiet I was in class, of how I didn't participate in any class activity. It really used to hurt me so much, but I didn't know what to do. And to make it even worse, no teacher even sat me, no, not one single teacher even sat me one day and asked me, Jacinta, why are you always like this? They just ignored it and they never helped me back at home. Things were very, very bad for me. I was always alone. I used to spend most of my time in the house. I remember even one time my, my dad had to push me out of the house to go and play with other kids because I, I, I was always in the house, day in, day out, just watching TV. I never even had these people. You can see they are your childhood friends back at home. I never had even one single friend back at home. And every time, I used to hate every time we would go for so, social gatherings back at home, be it family gathering, get together. I used to hate them. And I used to hate Christmas. I used to hate Christmas a lot because I knew during Christmas, we would have to go to my mom's side, my mom's home. And every time we went there, you know, there, there are a lot of people. Guests come, people are always coming in and out. And every time we'll go there, we'll always be so quiet. I was always feeling anxious and afraid to go and play with them because there were guys, girls and boys. I was so, so afraid. And I used to admire how my sister was so confident to play with them. But me, I was always so anxious to go and play with them and no, no one understood me. Up to now, I still feel anxious going to the Ushago, my mother's side. And sometimes people might think that you, are, you don't care about them. <laughs> Because most of the time you are always quiet, you avoid going there. Because me, I always avoid going there because of the much anxiety that I usually feel of having to be around them and having to interact with them, having to be being around just anyone makes me anxious and I avoid it at all costs. I usually hate family gatherings. Before a family gathering, I usually spend the whole week feeling anxious about that event. How is it going to turn out? It gets to a point sometimes I get tempted to use alcohol to manage my anxiety, especially during social events. I get tempted, but I avoid it at all costs. And it's usually very, very bad for me. So I usually do it with a lot of struggle in me. It's a real struggle. And you know one thing about social anxiety, it fights you all day, it never gets tired. It fights you from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to sleep. So it's always so overwhelming for me. The only time I don't feel anxious, I can say it's when I'm alone in the house, I'm the only one in the house, and when I'm asleep. When I'm alone, I won't feel anxious. Let's say I'm in the street walking alone, I won't feel anxious. When I'm but when I'm around anyone, from my dad, from my grandmother, from my aunties, from everyone, I always feel anxious being around anyone, even people I'm used to. And it even makes me ha it hard for me to even have 
friends, even make friends, even connect with people because you are always feeling anxious, out of place. You feel as if you bore people, as if people will laugh at you and interact, people will judge you. So most of the time you avoid interactions with people and it, it's not easy. After finishing high school, I was now supposed to join college. College is where I've suffered the most, even Whenever I think about it, I even don't know why I even went to that college. I even don't know how I survived in college. Social anxiety can make you quit school. I remember when I heard that I was going to join college, I was so, so anxious and afraid of how I would survive in college. You know in college now you are free to the world. You are not enclosed like in high school where you are enclosed in one area all of you college you are free to do whatever you want free to interact with wh whoever you want and i remember the first day i joined college the moment i got to that gate before i could enter i was already feeling anxious i was shaking trembling i was in so much anxiety to a point i felt as if i was going to turn around and go home but I just forced myself to enter that gate and I went straight to the lecture class. But on reaching the lecture class, I was already late for class. On peeping through the window, I saw that all my classmates were seated down. And the class was so full, we were about 200 students, first years. And the moment I saw that, my anxiety increased even the more. My fear was that if I open the door, all the students are going to look behind and see who is that girl who is entering. So that fear made me to just stand there like a person who was so, so confused. I didn't know what to do. Social anxiety makes you have this thing called the spotlight effect where you, your mind tells you that everyone is staring at you. Even when people are not staring at you, when, when you when you are with a group of people, your mind always tells you that everyone is staring at you, everyone is judging you. So you can imagine I'm sitting behind, all the students are facing in front, but all that time I'm confused, I'm feeling dizzy, I'm trembling, I'm shaking, I'm having all these physical symptoms of anxiety, and my mind is telling me that everyone is staring at me. I felt as if I was going to get out of that class and go away and never come back but I just forced myself. I never used to concentrate in class. All the time, I used to dread going to college. Each and every time I would wake up in the morning and as I was ironing my clothes, I would be feeling so anxious all the time and I would feel as if I'd, I'll not go to that school, but I just had to force myself because I had no choice. I had to go to school, I couldn't stay at home. I used to make myself busy by pretending that I'm reading. I used to carry this novel all the time in college and I pretend that I'm busy reading it to avoid interactions with people. I, I dreaded having to interact with people or socialize with people at all in college. This one time we had a presentation in class and I was chosen to present for a group. That day I went in front of that class and I, it was me with another guy. And as we were about to present, when it was my turn, even scrolling the laptop was an issue. I couldn't. I was trembling and shaking so much, I couldn't. I got confused to a point that guy told me to just leave it, that he was going to explain to the class. And after he was through, I was so, so embarrassed. And I felt so, so humiliated. I felt like less of a person. And I remember the lecturer saying that if you know you are not so confident, build on your confidence because you know this course involves having to interact with people. And sometimes it got to a point I failed to take my project. That day I was so anxious to a point I couldn't gather enough courage to go and just enter in a lecturer's office and present my project to her. And it was a lady. The lecturer told me to go and write a, a, a letter of why I never brought my project. I went and I sat down and asked myself, now what will I do? 
I decided to write the truth. I wrote in that form. I wrote. I told. I I wrote that the reason for me not bringing my project was because I was feeling so much anxiousness in me. You know, I have this condition, and I was so so anxious that day to a point I couldn't bring my project. The moment the lecturer read that letter, the lecturer was so so shocked. To a point, she told me, Jacinta, what is this? You mean the reason for you not bringing was because you are feeling fearful? She was so, so shocked and she forgave me in that instance. And she asked me if I've ever sought any type of help. And I just told her, yes. And from that day, I was forgiven. But it used to interfere with my performance in college. Most of the time in college, I was always told that Eh, and you are always serious. Now, Nakuanga are very, very serious all the time. You get even people, so, by the way, there is someone who told me that, hey, you are always, always very, very serious to a point, Unakam una Kali. Someone might even be afraid to talk to you. Yes, that was true. Most of the time, I was always very, very serious in college. I used to have this resting beach face. Not because I used to, it used to come out because of how much anxious I was. And I didn't want it to interact with people. But can you imagine a whole year almost ended without even some of my classmates knowing what my name was because I was always very, very quiet in class. And every time we had lecture class, I was always feeling anxious and I feared speaking to people. Like speaking to someone will make me feel anxious all the time. The only people I spoke to was about a list of only four classmates of mine. I was always very, very quiet. And during my second year of college, we were supposed to go for attachment for three months. Even me having to look for attachment was an issue. My aunt helped me and I got, at, I got attachment at this particular farm in Gigiri. I remember the first day I went and I was welcomed well. I was even bought for lunch. The, day, the first day was not that bad for me, but as the days went by, my anxiety became even the more and more worse. I used to fear interacting with my co-workers, my bosses. I used to dread it when my boss would call me to the office. Sometimes it used to get so worse to a point, to a point I'll wake up from my desk and go to the toilet to calm down. I used to feel so, so anxious to a point I just wake up, I get out of my chair and I go to the toilet I stayed there for 10 minutes trying to calm myself down. I used to suffer so much at work. And every time I would go to work, the moment I would enter that door, anxiety would increase the more. Even me having to greet my coworkers every single morning was a huge thing for me. I used to dread having to greet them. And it really hurt me so much to, to, to know that I couldn't even concentrate on what I was do doing during that attachment period. I couldn't even connect with these people, get to know how, how the industry is, I get even to know them personally. It was so, so hard for me. Even during lunchtime, I used to experience a lot of anxiety having to go for lunch and having to eat in front of them. It was always so bad for me.